Shalom, all praises to Yahweh, Ba'asham, Yahweh Shai, double honors unto the apostles and elders of great millstone who rule well, and Shalom to the hopeful elect. This is um, Paya Allah from the GMS London camp, and um, his video is just around, centered around um, news and prophecy, all right? And basically, um, we all, as you should be aware of, Hurricane Harvey basically tore apart Houston that up uprooted it from from its um stability and now they're in dire the people of Houston are in dire straits okay so um they're saying they got another um hurricane on the white way Irma um which I believe they said is looking to they calculated that's going to make landfall on the east coast go up through Florida and the east coast and and make landfall for around the time of 9-11. There's also information out there basically prove, proving that it was done by um, um, HARP, which is basically where Esau can manipulate the weather and create all these natural disasters. But then the credit ain't gonna be put down to Esau did this. Obviously the most High put the spirit on Esau to make the things that he has, like he made the, that he put the spirit on him to make the missiles. So, um. These times that we're in, with all these things happening, this is the Lord showing his presence, man. He's making his presence felt. He's he's basically ripping, gutting Esau from the inside out, okay? And how's he gotten him? He's gotten him by, um, you know, gotten his system. And Esau obviously believes he's administering a thing known as all the Abkeo, where basically via him, creating this order in his society, he's going to establish his new world order. But that's part of the Heavenly Father's plan, man, because that's why it says in Job 20, um, it says when he's about to fill his belly, then basically that's when the Lord's going to, you know, cast the missiles on him. So I want to read a, a, just a few excerpts of this article, I've got some information and a scripture, and it shouldn't take too long. It'll be a quick thing. Um, this is from AP News. Okay, black, white, rich, poor, Storm Harvey didn't discriminate. Okay, and you know this is Storm was, if you know the scriptures, the Lord speaks via storm and tempest, thunder and lightning. Okay, so this is this is the Lord, you know the Lord isn't a respecter of person. So I don't, the Lord don't care if you, if you're a Jake, you don't care if you're an Edomite, you know, you don't care if you, you're rich or you're poor. He's doing what His will. Okay. He's not respected persons. So this is Houston AP. Harvey did not discriminate in its destruction. It raged, and that's the same thing the missiles are going to do. They ain't going to dis well, they ain't going to discriminate in their destruction in the time. The only people that are going to survive this forthcoming destruction really is the elect. But even with that said, some of the elect are going to be, um, you know, they're going to be um, taken to concentration camps and be beheaded, all right? So it says, um, Harvey did not discriminate in its destruction. It raged through neighborhoods, rich and poor, black and white, upscale and working class, across Houston and surrounding communi communities. No group sidestepped its paralyzing um, delu deluges and apocalyptic floods, floods. And we're in a time of the, the, you know, the apocalypse, okay, so to speak. Harvey didn't spare anyone. The whole city is traumatized, said Lynette Burrell. Um, whose backyard pool filled with murky water and sc and schools of minnows um, from Bray's Bio on the city's southwest side, uh, not far from downtown. Far to the northeast edge of the sprawling sea, a flotilla of boats rescued affluent residents of the pine forest villages of Charming Kingwood psychologists, doctors, business owners, these, these guys have, you know, up, you know, they they're they're somewhat regarded in society, but they're getting help, man. They that degree or that, that job, that title they have, they were in the war the same way. And it's gonna be the same thing when the destruction comes. The Lord ain't looking at you and saying, Well he has a degree or she has a degree or upstanding um part of the society. It's whether you're you're chosen of the elect, man. That's all it boils down to. You got a lot and your lot has to be fulfilled. 
And on the far west side, the release of stormwater from the addicts and barker reservoirs pushed a devastating tide into some of Houston's more wealthy neighborhoods. Okay, and there's videos out there where they show one where they'll basically, the devil was saying that in order to save fi um, eight affluent um, areas from a reservoir that's going to break, basically they had to break a reservoir and they had the choice between eight affluent um, sections, I think they called them, or 50 um, like other sections, and they were going to flood the 50 sections to save the eight affluent areas, man. So they're showing you that Esau, when he has control of these things, he's looking to save his own ass, man. He don't give a fuck about no Israelites, man. Negroes, Hispanics, so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans. He cares about his own. And even at that, he only cares about the elite of the elite, you know? All right, so it says, um, clear across um, town to the southwest, low-slung brick and clapboard cl cl homes in the heavily Af African-American and Hispanic Lockwood area, Jake, you know, in Israel, area was swamped. Missouri City, home to Houston's largest Asian population, endured more than 40 inches of flood, of rain. Houston Mayor Sylvester Turner, fearing that a full-fledged evacuation of the nation's fourth largest city in a phase of oncoming storm, uh, face of the oncoming storm would be dangerous, advised residents to remain in place <laughs> and get flooded to death. So when Harvey submerged roughly 70% of the landmass in Harris County, all demographics were um, in, inundated. Okay, the poor tend to suffer most in disasters after Hurricane Katrina in 2005. Who's the poor, man? The poor tells you that. Revelations 2 and 9, man. And even um, Jeremiah 14 and 2. The poor, is, you know, you tribes, man. We're rich in spirit, but we're poor in this, in this society, in this world. All right. And they, they were the main sufferers in Hurricane Katrina. And if you throw your mind back to that, that's when Kanye West even come out and said, George Bush hates black people. And you had Austin Powers um, breaking character, man. Um, the poor tend to suffer most in disasters after Hurricane Katrina in 2005. The world was left with uh, nightmare images of residents in New Orleans' impoverished Lower Ninth Ward screaming for help from their rooftops. That storm, which claimed 1,800 lives, stands as a prime example of urban inequality and, envir and environmental injustice. So, they, yeah, they don't give a shit about you, Jake. And guess what? You niggas that left um, New Orleans and s settled down in Texas, and you just use the Lord. There's people that survived that, and they got, you know, messed up in this um, Hurricane Harvey, man. Okay, and there's every exception that Houston's poor and working class lacking the resources of the affluent will struggle most to rebuild. And that's true, man. Um, uh, but I'm just going to read this. But in this moment, as the waters begin to recede, Houston's residents of all colours and social economic statuses find themselves united in their loss, their despair and their resilience. But it just said, <laughs> but it just said they will struggle most to rebuild. So they ain't united in shit, man. But the fact that they they went through it. So now this is the last point I'm gonna bring out and go into some other information. Now this is um. Okay, this is um. Someone that was involved in this, you know, this judgment. Down the block, Wilder Ivy Anderson also came home to find his house and belongings destroyed. As the storm raged, he carried his mother on his back through the treacherous flood and watched his home fill up with water. He knew he knew would cause horrible damage. Fill up with water, he knew would cause horrible damage. The house had flooded during Tropical Storm Allison in 2001, but he had flood insurance back then, not this time. So he, he's basically effed, okay? Now, this is what he's saying. And this is most you people, because we said at the beginning of this article... What they say, black, white, rich, poor, Storm Harvey didn't discriminate. And this destruction ain't going to discriminate nobody. You're all going to be, you're all got a portion in this, okay? Everyone. Even the elect got to go through it, man. 
we'll, so we'll get. So he said, this is what he said. I'm counting on FEMA. He said, if FEMA can't help, I don't know if I'll be able to rebuild. It hurts. This has been my home for 18 years. It hurts. All right. So he said he's counting on FEMA. And that's what everyone's going to be counting on because basically you ain't got nowhere else to go. You're going to have to go to that concentration camp. And you had the information come out. A news reporter was asking a guy that was homeless. He said, well, what, what, you know, I, I don't remember the specifics, but the point being this, the answer to his question, he said, look, inside of those, you know, in the, inside of the shelters, they're, they're killing people and harvesting their organs. The guy skipped that. Then he said, I'm an ex-police officer. And I, I, can't mem I can't remember, but the point being that he knew they were killing people in the shelter, shelters, okay, which are basically internment camps, concentration camps, all right? And they're going to harvest their organs because that's population control. That's, uh, you know, monetizing resources, you know, basically it's racking up on resources that can be monetized. Because when you look into um, bodily um, organ harvesting, there's a lot of money in that. Okay, so this is FEMA's, FEMA camps conspiracy theories, conspiracy theory on Wikipedia, which ain't a conspiracy theory. This is, a, you know, this is real ish that's going to come. The FEMA camps conspiracy theory holds that the US Federal Emergency Management Agency, okay, FEMA, is planning to imprison US citizens in concentration camps. This is typically described as following the imp imp imposition of martial law. And they declared a state of emergency in various cities outside of Houston as well. All right. So they and and don't forget, you had um during in the midst of everything happening, Trump basically revoked um uh something that um Obama passed about dealing with the militarization of the police. I believe that that is ten thirty three program. I'm not sure if it's that specifically, but basically he's remilitarized the police, man. So you see everything that's happening, you've got the shelters in place, the state of emergency and the militarization of the police, which they're trying to mask it under. You've got dummies that think that basically what they're doing is utilizing resources that the army had, you know, and just giving it to the, um, um, the police officers. But what business has a, has a police officer got with a grenade launcher, man? I don't, that, I don't, that don't, this ain't die hard, you know what I mean? That's, that's, they're going to do some real damage, man. Jacob's trouble. Okay. This is typically described as following the imprisonment of martial law in the United States after a major disaster, disaster or crisis. Jacob's trouble, man. And there's going to be more. You can see, when you read Matthew 24, it tells you there's going to be basically rise, uprisings of the people. There's going to be earthquakes. There's going to be a famine, pestilence. Like, the, we're talking disease, lack of food, martial law, uh, race riots. It's going to pop off uh, the restriction of money and introduction of crypto, um, not cryptocurrency, it's lucky. <laughs> introduction of, um, of um, the, the um, cashless society, okay? And the reason why I mentioned crypto is because they're, they're basically, that's a big thing that's trending right now. And you've got the banks looking into it. Like the Bank of England, England guy, um, Carnegie, or whatever his name is, that runs it, he said that in two months' time, this is like basically about a month around September, October, they're going to determine whether they want to use like a, 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 a virtual currency, which will segue into the chip, all right? So it says, in some ver versions of the theory, only suspected dissidents will be imprisoned. And that's true because they have a list, all right? Rex 84, King Alpha, King Alpha plan. You got all these different plans that they have in place, these statues that they have in place, and they're going to execute them, all right? They are going to execute them. And um, when they execute them, that's when they're going to round up basically all the undesirables, man. The only people that are going to be left in a society is the people that benefit this society, which are those zombies, those dummies, people that are adhere to the system and that can be utilized as well, man, okay? Um, in more extreme versions, large numbers of US citizens will be imprisoned for purposes of extermination as a new world order is established. The conspiracy theory established since the late 1970s, 
but it picked up greatly in popularity since the late 1990s. So that's it, man. And that's 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 really what's gonna happen. That's the time we're heading into here. Right now. Um as evidence of the conspiracy theory, proponents point to supposed FEMA camps already existing in the United States. These, however, often being known established purposes such as Amtrak facilities and armed forces training centers. In some cases, genuine internment camps have been pointed to, but they have always been outside the United States. But really, they, they do. They have, um, they have a, I believe, Amtrak. I'm not sure if you're not familiar with Amtrak is totally. I believe it's tra- a train network. Yeah. They have a train, um, FEMA have a train network, one, for one. They have um, Walmart is in cahoots with them, right? That's why they've been shutting down their malls to turn them into internment camps. And they have standing internment camps that, you know, they ain't going to tell you about, okay? And um, as well as they ordered four million, I believe, I can't remember how many coffins, man, open coffins, which can fit four bodies in them, man. Then don't, let's not forget, you got um, NSA ordered a couple million hollow point bu- bullets, man. They're preparing for this war. That's why they're disarming the people over in America, Babylon the Great, okay? And they're preparing for the time of Jacob's trouble. So, um, um, yeah, that's the point. I mean, you can read through this, you know, there, there's information in here. You could do your research, you know, Google it. But, um, I'm going to finish off on the scriptures. So this is Isaiah 29 and 6. Thou shalt be visited of the Lord of hosts with thunder and with earthquake and with great noise, with storm and tempest and flame of devouring flower. So this is the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bar Hashem, Yahweh Shai, okay, the Most High and His Son, so-called, that look like so-called black men. They're establishing the Lord, the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, is establishing His name, His presence upon the earth. That's what he's doing, okay? That's why he's visiting the earth in this manner, okay? Now, you got to remember when he revealed himself onto Moses, okay, in the mount, how did he come, man? You had the dark cloud enfolding itself with the fire coming out and the, the lightning and the thunder. They, that's how he comes, man. And also in the book of Samuel, it tells you that, that that's, that's how, you know, and Psalms outlines it as well. But that's how the Lord gets down. He comes out with that terrible noise. And when you hear that serious thunder, it sounds like the, the, the roof's going to cave in. You know, like the, the, the heavens are going to fall upon you, man. It's like some thunderous noise. And that's the Lord making his presence felt. That's why this hurricane, uh, uh, hurricane um, Harvey's happened. And now you've got Irma on the back of it. And you've got all these, and there's even earthquakes that are happening in the midst of that, man. And all these different turmoils. Okay, don't let's not forget North Korea fire, firing weapons, right? This is all headed, headed to one destination, man. The time of Jacob's trouble, Revelations three and ten. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep you keep thee from the hour of temptation, and that's what we pray upon. That's why we out here labor, man. We fear out, out here laboring. Um, with, um, seek ye your own salvation with fear and trembling. That's what we're doing. We're, we're, we're praying with faith that the Lord will deliver us from this time that's coming, man. Because we have the fear of the Heavenly Father, which is a blessing. You know, Proverbs, the first chapter tells you that, that basically, um, in order to learn wisdom, you have to have the fear of the Heavenly Father. So that's why we're out here, okay? But keeping our patience is being consistent with this word. And, you know, we go out on the highways and byways being the main portion of this work, the foolishness of preaching. But then we got to give you these daily epistles, man. You know, the Spirit hit us. And you got to really, like, you got to pray to the Heavenly Father and really push the Spirit to, you know, perpetuate His Word, okay? Because if you're lukewarm, like it says in this chapter, the Heavenly Father is going to spew you out. And then you won't keep, and then you ain't kept the patience, and then you haven't endured. And that, that crown that was laid up for you, you ain't getting that. Well, it would, never was laid up for you, man. That crown, you you know, you you basically um, didn't finish the race. Okay? So, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world. The article say before, the title of the article, Black, White, Rich, Poor, 
And these are the extremes, the black and white. That covers really, you know, general, when you generalize, that's the extremes. Jake to Esau, that's the main two players in, 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 in this story. Rich, poor, Storm Harvey didn't discriminate. And that's the time of Jacob's trouble. The Heavenly Father is not discriminating in no manner, okay? So I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation. So the elect are going to be kept from the hour of temptation, the time of Jacob's trouble, which shall come upon all the world. Okay, no one, none, none shall escape, all right, to try them that dwell upon the earth. Okay, and that's going to that's gonna be a trying time for the faith of the elect. Okay, so with that, man, I pray you are edified. Say all praises to you, Alba, Hashem, Yahushai, double honors unto your apostles and elders of great millstone who rule well. And shalom to the hopeful elect. Shalom.